All right, we spent a lot of time talking about consumer behavior. Let's talk a little bit about organizational buying behavior. Because as your book points out, organizations buy uh, many more goods than individual consumers do. So this is a very important market and one that, that uh, many um, non-business uh, people don't know much about. So the business marketing uh, breaks down into basically three types of organizational buyers. There's industrial markets. These are companies who buy goods and services to help them produce other goods and services that will eventually be sold to end users. Uh, so this could be a factory that makes automobiles, having to buy all the materials to make automobiles, everything from buying tires to buying sheet metal to make the um, uh, to make the fenders for the automobile and and all the other components that go into an automobile. There are reseller markets, and these of course include wholesalers and retailers who basically buy goods that are already finished and take those goods, break them down, uh, maybe from large large quantities into individual components, and then sell them to the end users eventually, typically um, consumers. And then, of course, we have government markets, and these are all the government agencies who buy goods and services um, for use in their, um, in, in their business. Uh, that includes everything from the military buying airplanes to uh, city officials buying squad cars to um, a place like the uh, University of Nevada at Las Vegas uh, buying um, supplies that they might use to conduct business here buying, for instance, signage so that students can find their way around the campus. I, there are, uh, of course, here's a chart that, that shows the, the number of, of uh, individual cust or, uh, or organizational customers in each of these markets. You can see by far the industrial markets are the largest, followed by the reseller markets and then government markets. Each, though, is a, is a, is a very large uh, consumer of material. Some of the unique aspects of organizational buying behavior include the concept of derived demand. That is sort of the notion, uh, an example would be an appliance manufacturer buying steel so that they can fabricate that steel into um, components to make refrigerators or washers or dryers. That demand for steel is in, is, is in, is in fact derived from the end desire to for customers to buy washing machines and other appliances. So the demand for steel in that case is derived, and that's referred to then as derived demand. The size of the order of purchase is usually much larger for organizational buying behavior, sort of like um, um, Costco or Sam's Club on steroids. You, you know, many case, in many instances, buying product by the car load or uh, truck load. Uh, the number of potential buyers, even though we just saw in a previous slide that there are many, many organizational buyers, uh, the typical number of potential buyers for any particular type of product is much less than there is in the consumer markets. Um, another uh, point of difference uh, might be the organizational buying objectives. Um, most organizations buy products to help them become more profitable or more efficient or perhaps to lower costs. Um, they also have other buying objectives, for instance, um, the support of minority and women suppliers and vendors, and also uh, a focus on sustainability and being green in the um, uh, being green in terms of uh, pollution and recyclability of products. Uh, here's a chart that you ought to be familiar with. That's in your book. It talks about the uh, organizational, the, the the key characteristics and dimension of organizational buying behavior. Such things as um, uh, under under products and services, we see that many of the goods in, uh, are purchased are raw and semi-finished materials that eventually will be made into goods and services that are sold to the end consumer. Here are the stages of organizational of the organizational buying process, and you'll notice that these are exactly the same stages as the consumer buying process that we just discussed. That is, problem recognition, information search, alternative evaluation, the purchase decision, and then post-purchase behavior. Uh, and so, it is interesting to realize that these 
stages are in fact the same stages but how the organization goes through those stages and 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 how that how that process works is probably different for a group uh, for an organization than it is for an individual that's why we have this separate chapter in the book some of the key organizational buying criteria tend to be price quality specifications, the ability to deliver the product on schedule, past performance as a supplier, technical capabilities to help us solve problems with the product, warranties, claims policies, and then and then the capacity to uh, provide us with the amount of uh, materials we're going to need and when we're going to need them. Some other characteristics of organizational buying. In many cases, organizations want the product there, um, want the product delivered when they need it. Even a retailer, if you take a store like a like a giant Walmart store, um, they have virtually no extra inventory in the store. All their inventory is placed on the shelves. And if you've ever been in a Walmart store late at night, you'll notice that they're restocking the shelves. Those that restocking takes place because a a delivery truck has dropped off the goods. Uh, for Walmart based on on what their cash registers um, recorded in terms of inventory sold that particular day. Those, those um, um, inventory data is sent to the warehouse. The warehouse decides what products need to be restocked. Those products are put on a truck. That truck delivers them directly to the store. And, and if you think about that from a distribution standpoint, um, that's exactly what organizational organizations want they do not want to have to carry and stock inventory they want their they want the product there just when they need it there to be used another important aspect of organizational buying is relationship marketing of course we talk about relationship marketing in in at the very first chapter in the book the reality is that relationship marketing started with large industrial companies um, and building relationships with uh, with organizational buying clients uh, there is an idea of supplier partnerships where many, in many cases people who are supplying products um, for an organizational buyer are actually brought in to help design the product and in fact many cases supplying that product is a partnership rather than simply uh, you asking me to send you some, some product or bid on a product. There is the concept of reciprocity in organizational buying. This is the notion that if I buy from you, you should buy from me. That is, if I buy raw materials from one of your subsidiaries, then you ought to be buying the finished goods from me. And then, of course, the last characteristic is the idea of sustainability, both sustainability from, and you remember, the, um, you remember when we talked about the ethics chapter, it was the, um, the, the idea um, that, that sustainability included profit responsibility to stakeholders, uh, responsibilities to society at large, and then and then a responsibility to the employees of the organization. Some characteristics of uh, organizational buying: the buying center. The buying center is, of course, the uh, the, the the place in the organization where the uh, actual the actual um, decision process is executed. For many product categories, there is a buying committee that is a group of people within the buying center and maybe people outside the buying center in the organization who have technical expertise who are brought together to decide on which products to buy. Uh, the roles of the people in the buying center are very similar to the family roles that we talked about before. That is users, influencers, deciders, and buyers. And there's an additional group here called the gatekeepers. These are the individuals that... Um, uh, that determine whether or not um, your goods or services might even might be considered. This is everything from the uh, management assistant that won't let you in to see the purchasing agent to uh, someone um, on the on the buying um, uh, committee who doesn't think that your product will meet the needs of the organization. So dealing with gatekeepers is a very important aspect of um, organizational buying. The buy classes for um, organizational buying include a straight rebuy, which when we talked about consumer behavior, um, we, we referred to as a, a routine problem solving, uh, to a new buy, which of course um, in the consumer behavior literature we referred to as a extended problem solving. So if you think about the sorts of things that an organization might buy, they might be restocking uh, products that they buy on a very regular basis. This doesn't require a lot of time or effort, obviously, um, but it does it does require that the organization 
make those purchases. Modified rebuy would be, of course, something that we buy um, uh, on a, on a semi-routine basis, but that maybe uh, over time we make changes to the specifications of exactly what we want. And then we have a new buy where it's a product or good or service that we have not purchased in the past. Here we have a chart that sort of shows how, how the people involved, the decision time, the problem definition, the buying objectives, and whatever associated with these different types of decisions. Obviously, new buy decisions, especially for large items like a brand new building for the hospitality school, requires a lot of time and effort. On the other hand, um, uh, the, the, the university um, um, buying... Um, um, uh, 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 something to uh, you know, new lawnmowers to uh, to help make sure the grass is cut is probably much more of a routine purchase. Um, once again, here's some uh, some an example of so, of a supplier uh, selection criteria for um, for buying a piece of equipment, and notice that the criteria um, um, is set up and. And the organization is probably a little bit more quantitative and detailed in, in putting together the evaluation of individual alternatives. Online buying and organizational markets. Um, uh, the, one of the interesting things, of course, is that the while we think of the Internet as a place where consumers go to buy goods, it is also a place where companies go to buy goods. Uh, and two ways that this happens for organizational markets um, um, might be straight purchasing, but it also might be what's called a traditional auction where uh, I offer goods for sale and I try to find who will in fact um, give me the most money for my goods. One of the things we see a lot in organizational buying online is reverse auctions where I send out a call for something. I need um, 15 new squad cars for my police department. And what I do is I, as I send that, I, I send that that reverse auction request out, and I see who will provide me with those squad cars meeting the specifications at the lowest. Uh, here's a little chart that shows that in a traditional auction, as the number of buyers goes up, obviously the price um, that ends up being paid for the goods goes down. Uh, in a reverse auction, if I'm the company and I'm and I'm trying to acquire something, as the number of sellers um, qualified sellers goes up, the price that I have to pay typically goes down because there is obviously more competition. Comparison of business to, uh, business to customer versus business to business e-commerce. Um, there are lots of numbers out there and it's really hard to get a, put a finger on this, but, but, but business to business e-commerce is dramatically larger than business to consumer e-commerce. Whether it's twice as large or five times as large or seven times as large is a little hard to say because different people count those num put those numbers together in different ways. Uh, the conclusion to be drawn is that business to business online e-commerce is much larger than um, uh, business to consumer. Now, having said that, uh, we, it's very important to realize that many large and small businesses benefit from the great expansion of e-commerce. And what I have here is a little chart that we put together for um, um, uh, last year that shows um, e-commerce as a total of retail sales. As you'll notice that in 2010, e-commerce um, was a, about 4.4% of the total retail sales. Uh, and by 2016, it was up to 8.2%. And you'll notice in that far right-hand column that the change from the prior year that e-commerce sales have been growing uh, uh, by double digits for the last uh, seven years, ranging from 13.3% to over 17.5% annually. So obviously there's a lot, a lot of growth in this area, and it helps small businesses uh, become more profitable.